Let's take a look at how the teachers' rebellion is spreading nationally. So far, four states are feeling the backlash from educators as they close schools to march for better funding and pay. Three of the affected states, Arizona, Oklahoma, and West Virginia, rank at the very bottom in teacher salaries. And all four states pay below the national average of just over $58,000. The recent wave of protests started in West Virginia, where schools in all 55 counties were closed for a total of nine days as a teacher strike there won a 5% raise. In Oklahoma, it is illegal for teachers to strike, so educators did their homework on what they could do, resulting in the current walkout and showing unity similar to what we saw in West Virginia. The Oklahoma Education Association is pushing for a $10,000 pay raise over the next 10 years. In Kentucky right now, public schools are shuttered in all 120 counties as teachers there march on their state capitol in Frankfurt, protesting a bill just approved by the state assembly that changes their pension plans that's among one of their chief concerns the bill originally dealt with wastewater services before the pension measure was added in some lawmakers argued they did not even have enough time to read the added language before voting began kentucky teachers are also seeking per student funding and the restoration of school resource centers. And now protests are cropping up in Arizona, where teachers have taken to the streets of Phoenix, the state capital, pushing for a 20% pay increase. Arizona saw nearly a 25% drop in education funding from 2008 to 2015. So remember, they're asking for these raises after steep cuts right. have happened. Mariana Atencio joins us now. She is live with educators in Oklahoma City. Mariana, these teachers are saying that so guys, this is too little, too late uh, uh, about the legislators' attempt uh, at fixing this. Uh, what, what is it that they want to do uh, that they need to see in order to get back into the classroom? Ali, they're saying that lawmakers came up short. You're seeing the Oklahoma State Capitol behind me. Thousands of teachers, educators, state employees that are here. This walkout is well underway. They're also saying that the steep cuts that were made that have reduced their school week to four days a week, as you mentioned, uh, the class sizes are enormous for what the teachers are getting paid and the amount of teachers. That, what the legislator did, is not nearly enough to fix that. And I want to bring in Heather here because we also know that a quarter of Oklahoma teachers have had to leave the state. You're considering leaving yourself. You teach high school. Yes, I teach high school in Norman, Oklahoma. We have decided to leave. I've accepted another teaching position um, in Georgia. So it's it's just it's too hard to get by month to month on the salary here. And I want to show Aldi and Stephanie your sign, Oklahoma. Number one export is teachers. That is what teachers like Heather are facing mm -hmm. here. Heather, you're here with your young daughter. What is your name? Ellery. Ellery, do you know why you're here with your mom? Because teachers are leaving Norman. And you love your teachers, right? The kids love their teachers, Ali and Stephanie, and they're here because of them. And also, people like Heather, they're here not only because of a pay raise for them, they tell me, but because of those steep cuts to the education system. Yeah. What was the main motive behind you leaving? We have too many uncertified teachers teaching in Oklahoma, and I can't, I have two daughters. Um, Ellery's my oldest, and I mean, we're looking at the front end of a serious teaching crisis, and I want better for them, and that means leaving the state, unfortunately. So. Thank you so much, Heather. Thank you so much, Ellery. I want to give you this view of the Oklahoma yeah. State Capitol. Again, Ali and Stephanie, and, and as I mentioned, the three main points that educators are asking for today, they're asking for $200 million in additional funding for those state cuts. They're asking for $10,000 over the course of three years in salaries and they're also asking for five thousand dollars for what they call teacher support staff that's the janitors the the people that work in the cafeteria the mechanics is this whole school system that really needs more funding right now and that's why teachers are walking out and they're prepared to do so for a couple of days until their demands are met stephanie and ali mariana tensio thank you now we want to bring in national education association president 
Lily, Lily Eskelson Garcia, who uh, is joining us on this. Uh, Lily, thank you for joining us. Uh, this is a, a, a wave that Stephanie was talking about across the country of teachers not only uh, frustrated by their own salaries, which, by the way, when we compare them to other salaries, tend to be very low, but the uh, the, the, the decades plus of cuts to education that are causing teachers to have to take more out of their own pocket and yet still teach kids with fewer resources, with fewer textbooks, with, with failing classrooms. You know, these teachers and support staff, they don't want to be here. They feel like they have to be here, that they have a responsibility to stand up for their own profession, but also for their students. They're looking at textbooks that are 20 years old and held together with duct tape. They're looking at class sizes that exploded. And it wasn't a natural disaster. This is a crisis that was man-made. And it was a decision that people in this state capitol made to underfund, to defund public schools, really knowing that teachers were going to pick up the slack out of their own pockets. Enough is enough. I want to talk about some of these teachers who are actually leaving these states, picking up, moving their families to other states where they can be paid more as teachers and where they know those schools can provide their own kids with better education. We talk so much about the income inequality divide in this country. If we see this trend happen in mass, it's only going to worsen that issue. It's, it's not a coincidence that you're seeing this in the most underfunded, by design, underfunded education uh, programs in these states, in West Virginia, in Oklahoma. You look at Arizona, look at the places where for a dozen years there was this, there was this political ideology that you didn't have to invest in something as essential as a public school, that you would just underfund it, you'd have 40 kids in a classroom, what could go wrong? And you've had teachers who have worked within the system. They wrote letters. They invited uh, legislators to come and visit their schools and see the impact of this dismal funding. And they were ignored. And so there's a tipping point. There's a point where people say enough is enough. And, you know, we need to make some noise. We need to make everybody see what's happening to our students because we're, we feel like we're going to be leaving a profession that we love, and no one's going to be there to take our place. When you say underfunded by design, why would there be such a design? What do people who think that underfunding the public uh, school system, uh, what do they think gets achieved by that? Well, I think what you do is you're saying, well, we want to cut taxes. And if we're going to cut taxes for big wealth and big business, um, that means we won't have money for uh, things that the community needs, like a public school. What they've relied on over a decade of cutting and cutting and cutting without saying, now, wait a minute, that's money that goes to fund public education. They've seen teachers as the source that would fill in that hole that they've dug. Doesn't that and seem we absurd? Have. We pulled out of our own pockets. But doesn't that seem absurd? There's no other industry where one would expect the employees to fill in the gap. If there was a, a, a cut here, no one would say that, well, right. Stephanie and Allie are going to be operating the cameras on their own. Why is it that these states assume that would happen? Well, we're the only profession that steals from home and bring things to work, okay? That's, we, we, we just give our kids whatever it takes. I'm a sixth grade teacher. I bought a classroom set of Charlotte's Web because I didn't have any money for it um, in my school budget, so I take it out of my family's budget. And I think because we've had those hearts that we will do anything it takes for our students, that you have politicians that go, huh, well, sounds good to me. Let's just keep doing it that way. These teachers are saying, I love my kids too much to allow that to continue. And that's why the, the battle cry here is enough is enough. Do the right thing. We've done the right thing for a dozen years. We have backfilled that deficit, that hole of public school funding. It's time for these guys to do the right thing.
Lily Eskelson Garcia is the president of the National Education Association. Thank you for joining us. You know, if that expectation is there that you're going to take from home uh, to, to take it to work, then we, then we have to pay the teachers more. It's one or the other, right? Yeah. If you pay the teachers more money and they have to subsidize a little of this stuff, at least one would understand it. But they are among the lowest paid for their profession. I've never met, never met a teacher who went into the profession for anything other than the love but of education. But we're going to have students. less and less young people go into Absolutely. the teaching why, profession why would know you? that they can't support themselves. Yeah, this is, a, this is a tough one, and it's happening across the country. We'll stay on top of this walkout in Oklahoma. President Trump is calling for tough immigration laws now. Is